Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable week to this point. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, remember what I always tell you. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. So even if you aren't having a great day, even things are challenging, even if you're up against some things that seem to be pressing you back, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. If you're still in the fight, you still have a chance to win. Fight to win. On that note, look, let me remind you, and it's so important to get this, we are in the midst of a fundraiser for black men leading it. By now you know this. We've been pushing for several months to raise funds to continue the work we do uh, with young black men from ages four to age 30. Uh, we have a rite of passage initiative, which is how this initially started, to help properly socialize young black men, which reduces their proclivity to violence, reduces their dropout rate, reduces their risk for going to prison, reduces their risk of being violent towards their mates, and so much more. This is work that I've been doing for years. This is work that I take pride and passion in, and I have gotten an increased and spiked influx of young black males that are in need of my resources. And this is only getting worse. I've talked to you about it uh, numerous times. We're talking about an increase in depression, an increase in suicide, suicidal ideations, an increase in frustration, an increase in violence, uh, and so much more. We can go around shaking our heads. We can go around saying, oh my God, we can go around doing a bunch of things, but until we actually engage it, until we actually take action until we actually use what we are capable of doing stop looking outside of ourselves for someone to help us do what we are capable of doing start taking ownership and what is our responsibility our community is our responsibility our daughters are our responsibility our young black males are our responsibility because if we don't properly socialize these young black males to become strong powerful and stable black men our daughters are going to read the world when we are literally looking at a situation where we're turning unprepared young black men loose on our own babies because we don't want to engage the challenge that is in front of us a result of our failure to properly protect our communities to properly engage the responsibility of socializing young black males and it is now coming to roost it is now becoming immensely prevalent because we have left it unchecked for so long let me tell you something until we start to do something different until we start to do something better we're going to have this same problem and it's only going to get worse so i'm calling on you to look in the description box of wherever you're watching this video and Click that link and support the work we're doing. We've been doing this for years. This isn't anything new. Many of you have contacted me and I encourage you to continue to contact me. If there's a young black male that needs help, contact us. We're gonna do whatever we can within the confines of our resources to ensure that that person gets help. A lot of the stuff I've taken on personally and I can tell you that it is uh, perplexing how much need is out there with how little resources. I am currently working on some things. I talked to someone today and they may have some insight on how I can be uh, more effective in reaching these young males. But uh, the thing is, I'm not gonna quit on them. And I'm hoping that uh, we don't quit on them as a community uh, because it's easy to dismiss them as just being incorrigible. It's easy to dismiss them as not being uh, savable. That's the go-to for the black community. You can't save everybody. Well, who do you decide? How do you decide who deserves to be saved? Who doesn't? Uh, because there, are t there was a time that people would look at me and maybe thought I wasn't worth investing in. Uh, that I had a quick, quick switch that was going to ultimately end my life at an early age. You know, the fact that I live beyond 18 blows somebody's blows a lot of people's minds uh, you know we are going to have to face the fact that there's a lot of internal conflict a lot of uh, internal adversity a lot of things that we can we can categorize as being the enemy within 
Uh, you've heard me quote the African proverb, uh, if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. Well, there are far too many enemies on the inside. I mean, uh, I think it was Umar Johnson that said, like him or love him, hate him, it doesn't matter. But it was him that said that white supremacy is nothing without black compliance. Well, sometimes compliant isn't explicit. In other words, there are some blacks that are in absolute compliance. They 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 fight for the system, work for the system, push the system, uh, stand as guardians over the system. Uh, and they're easy to recognize. You know them and you, you categorize them. You know what y'all call them. I'm not gonna use them terminology. I, I refuse to use derogatory terminology whenever possible in referring to anybody black unless they just really get me. And I still won't use it, but I will call them for who they are. Just it's just where I'm at. Now that 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 we know that. But then there is the subtle compliance. And this is the compliance through inactivity inactivity uh to move against it. This is the compliance, the subtle condemnation or the silent condemnation. I'm not gonna say anything, I'm not gonna do anything, I don't wanna stir anything up. Then there is the counter compli counter behavior compliance. Whereas in the things I do work or serve to hurt my people. And it is not supporting the things that help, doing things that hurt, hurting my own people, all those things. Those are things we have to confront. Nobody's responsible for coming in our community and fixing the behaviors that we are perpetu perpetuating against one another. The distrust, the, the, the ongoing gender war we have right now that everybody pretends doesn't exist and that is escalating where each gender is blaming the other gender for all the ills of that's going on in the community when there's really truly enough culpability to go around where I can look at my black brothers and tell them multitudinous things that need to change if we're ever gonna uh, elevate but I can also look at my sisters and say hey we can't keep doing this we can't keep doing this we can't keep doing this that's not gonna work there's nobody clean in this but what I can tell you is that if we don't get outside of ourselves, if we don't get over ourselves, and I mean this in the purest way, and I start with me. I don't take myself that seriously. I'm serious in what I do. You always see me primarily in a serious way because the work I do is serious, but I don't take myself serious. What somebody thinks about me, what somebody says about me, how somebody feels about me, what people are saying about me when I'm not around means absolutely nothing to me. Um, you know, whether, you know, I can take a good joke, a bunch of other things. I don't take myself so seriously where I can't be wrong, where I can't be uh, in a space where we can, I can work with other people with different ideas. Uh, it's not about being right for me. It's about being effective. It's about being in, a, in an environment where people are doing things that help us win. But one thing we're going to do, we're all going to have to get over ourselves at a level that allows us to see the pain in other people, to see the struggle in other people, to see the need in other people so that we can work to produce solutions that benefit us as a whole. We got to get out of the individualism. The individualism has been a major disruptor in our ability to build. You can't build as an individual in a collective environment. We are social creatures by nature. And so to try to operate it on an individual level limits us. It restricts us. And it's a highly infect, effective tool by those who don't want to see us empower ourselves. Keep giving them uh, uh, keep giving them resources and rewards and, and accolades based off of things they do individually. Reward them as individuals, but never uh, respect, acknowledge, or reward them when they do something collectively. Always downplay the collective move. Always criticize the collective move. Always make them feel bad about coming together. And watch watch what's happening. But everybody else moves in collective groups. Everybody else operates in a social construct except us. We're going to have to do better. Like I said, I'm asking everybody, everybody, make a move. Show them some love and what we're doing. If you want to learn more about what we do, you can go to the Odyssey Project website and look at Black Men Lead and see the work we're doing with young black men and look at the need for us to make this a national network. Look at the need for us to empower young black men. Uh, if you haven't read my book, Academic Apartheid, Read the book, Academic Apartheid, and so that you can understand what our young black males are up against in the school system. 
and why so many of our young black males are caught up in the school, school to prison pipeline because of these disproportionalities that they face that people want to pretend doesn't exist. I'm fighting on behalf of a number of my clients right now that are part of an academic system that is squeezing them, so to speak. And I'm talking about at every level. I'm talking about from sixth grade through college. We have problems and we're not going to sit up and the, have the government fix it. No politician is going to fix it. We are going to have to fix it. I'm going to leave you on that note because I need to grab me a quick bite to eat. Then I need to get back in the office and get some work done. But I just had to share this and I'm going to get this up as soon as I get back in the office. We need your support. It's that simple. On that note, I'm out.